Nicole Capritz walks through a parking lot in Claremont and stops to gaze at the structures overhead. They look like metal trees, but with solar on top. The environmental activist points out so-called solar trees, which suspend solar panels over parking spaces. They collect electricity that runs into the adjacent offices of Kyocera, a solar panel manufacturer. The idea is that we want locally homegrown clean energy. We don't necessarily have to go out into open space miles away and ship energy into San Diego. We can build it right here and use it right here. And that's where we want the future to be. Generating solar power is just one rung on a ladder that will climb to 100% renewable energy by 2035. Or at least that's the goal laid out in Mayor Kevin Faulkner's Climate Action Plan. Achieving it will mean dropping natural gas from 52% of the city's power supply to zero. Capritz now heads the environmental nonprofit Climate Action Campaign. She wrote the original version of the climate plan and was surprised the renewable energy goal survived. 100% is bold and you know, pushing the envelope as to what our city leaders are usually comfortable doing. Now is the time in stories like these where you might expect to hear from business groups opposing such an environmentally ambitious plan. But that isn't going to happen. The environment and the economy are not um, things that are at odds with each other. Sean Carafin is the executive director of policy and economic research at the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce. A thriving business environment uh, is one in which the quality of life is, is high uh, so that we can attract the best and brightest uh, talent uh, from around the nation, around the world. So everybody's on board, but how will the city actually reach its 100% renewable goal? Capert says answering that question may end the kumbaya moment. I do unfortunately believe that there are going to be um, you know, tensions and uh, probably uh, battle lines drawn when the implementation of the plan moves forward and actual specific policy recommendations come to the fore that uh, people will kind of get back into their usual corners. The reason to enter the ring will likely be community choice aggregation. That's an alternative energy program that takes away purchasing power from San Diego Gas and Electric and gives it to the city. Capret says community choice is the only way to go 100% renewable. The problem is that we don't have any control or jurisdiction over our utility, and so we can never bind them to deliver 100% clean energy to us. But she worries SDG&E will influence the Chamber of Commerce to oppose the program. I'm just hoping that the other small businesses and voices at the chamber have equal weight and so we can have a fair conversation. Carafin with the chamber says his organization isn't opposed to community choice or CCA for short. The business group isn't considering other options for reaching the clean energy goal, at least for now. If we spend the next uh, year or two, three years uh, looking at community choice aggregation in every way and we decide that it is feasible, then excellent. If we decide that it's not feasible, then we shouldn't have to move forward with something that we've decided is infeasible. We should have the opportunity to look for another option that gets us to that same goal, which is 100% renewable energy. The Vermont city of Burlington recently became the first in the country to go 100% renewable. Mayor Miro Weinberger says his city has total control over the electric company. It's part of city government. I think it's really given Burlingtonians a much greater ability to see that their values and their environmental interests are reflected in, in their electrical utility. We don't have the same kind of responsibility to try to earn a return for investors as other types of utilities. San Diego's population is 33 times greater than Burlington's, so supplying renewable energy here will be a much bigger challenge. And nowhere in California has anyone taken that amount of the energy off of the local utilities load. So we're in uncharted waters when it comes to program size. Capert says within the next few years, she'll know whether the city is on track to reach its goal. If it isn't, the battle will begin, likely in the courtroom. We do have um, the threat, frankly, of people suing the city and, and saying, you have not met your legal obligation. And if we have to get the courts involved to tell the city, hey, uh, you're going to have to step up here and uh, meet these requirements, then that's what we're going to have to do. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News.